You know, what Steph did was, what's the expression from the ridiculous to the sublime? Like, that's where we are at this point. The end of a road trip against a great team at home. We just, you know, we weren't playing like ourselves in the first half. On the road against a great team, to be able to pull it out was, uh, was awesome. I thought you know, it was a great defensive performance for us in that first half. I thought we really defended very well. We let Curry get loose a few times. I think he made three straight threes. And I think really until Curry got, uh, got, Steph got loose there in that second quarter, I think, I think they were like one for nine. We had, their attempts were low. We were doing a good job. But I think I've said this maybe before the game, you know, about Curry. is like he understands the, the, the length and time in a game, you know, and obviously uh, um, there's, there's, there's – points in time in a game where he can hit you with some flurries like he did there. And this is good defense by Steven Adams. There's nothing you can do. It was a very emotional Golden State locker room at halftime. One player went on a profanity-laced tirade. It was so loud that everyone out in the hallway could hear it. The player was saying, I'm not a robot. You have me messed up right now. I believe the player was Draymond Green, but it's our private business, and but since everybody heard the yelling, uh, you guys can write whatever you want, but I'm not going to comment anymore on it. I mean, we're going to keep it to, close to the vest, but we want to win, and everybody wants to play well, and we expect greatness. Over the course of the season, you're going to have some emotion. The beauty of our team is when we leave the locker room, we're still united, and I think it, you know, lit a fire under us to uh, go out here and get this win. But this was the Warriors team right before the start of the second half. Definitely, it was what we needed. When you've been in the locker room and emotions flare, I think it, it comes from the right place. You know, I think that spark helped us in the second half. We know what goes on between our team. We know what sparks this team. We know what this team do, but what goes on in this locker room, standing in this locker room. But, you know, there was a part of that game there where they were playing without Curry, too, when he went out. We kind of just picked up the slack and, uh, you know, let's say, if Steph gets back, you know, we'll be ready for him. If he's not, you know, we'll try to do whatever's possible to try to win this game. And Curry a little shaken up, slow to get up. He's a tough guy. We know when him is, if it's serious, he'll be careful and he'll rest. He won't push it to further injure himself. Well, uh, anytime it's my ankles, it's, it's you, know, you feel that same kind of sensation that I had back in the day. It's a little nerve wracking, but um, it's wanted to, uh, to make sure I was okay, I had to get a retape. It's painful, but not the same similar injury that it used to be, so I'd be all right. Are you concerned about putting him back in the game or no? Not really. I mean, as long as, uh, as, long as our training staff said he was good to go. Obviously went down in the third, come back, and to put on a performance like that, I think that just shows his character and, and the amount of work that he puts in his game. It's, it's truly amazing what we're watching. And then, um, you know, the second half, um, I thought we still did a pretty good job. They're going to come around their run. Like, we can't get discouraged. Like, right now, I feel like not too high, not too low. They can give up a lead, but they can come back. You know what I'm saying? But just all that's really going to matter is, you know, just keep it close in the fourth quarter. Well, I actually, you know, was a little bit more concerned in that uh, end of that first uh, regulation, the fourth, you know, right around that three and a half, four minute mark, I thought we got into some real difficult situations when you're standing around. We're witnessing greatness out there. I mean, what he's doing night after night when the defense is constantly game planning for you. Uh, this car stacked against us with that deficit in the last, you know, two minutes basically. We did a nice job moving the basketball and it found some different people. Serge made a shot. We, we, we had basically a downstream play on Kevin. They top locked it and, and Kevin, you know, I thought it was the right pass by Russell. It was over the top. What Kevin was trying to do in that situation was trying to draw a foul. You know, he felt like the guy was bodying him and if he got it up to the rim real quickly, maybe he gets two, two shots out of it. Clay kind of got it going. Clay had a really quiet night and, you know, you have a guy scored 32 points and it's overshadowed from, from another guy on the same team. They're two guys. They they got, you know, they got half from the three. He had a big shot in the fourth quarter and made some big plays in the second half. Uh, they've come out, comes guns blazing, and keep fighting and get up and just try to find a way. The effort in the second half was incredible. Kevin made a big three. The ball moved pretty well, and we were able to get some decent looks. Back out, Durant for three. Bang! No matter if we're down four or ten seconds or up four or ten seconds, we're never going to quit. 
Clay making huge buckets when he you know, had gone cold a little bit and found a way to hit a huge three and get a, a layup. I probably should have helped Kevin there when it came in bounds. You know, I think maybe he was waiting for a foul. Maybe I could have jumped in there and helped him there a little bit. The steal he made, Draymond's effort to, to collect it. Um, you know, but even with all that being said, you know, the, the ball kind of got, got thrown away. I think Draymond Green saved it. Can you talk about if you were fouled and, and the If I was fouled from a shot fake and uh, contact on the shot, I guess that's the rules. If it's contact on the shot, uh, the referees will call foul and you shoot two free throws. Honor is a very clutch player. He has been his whole career. It's very cerebral just to pump it and get those fouls. It's what half of that wants the game. He makes big shots when they're on the line and um, did it tonight. And he's going to do it in the future, I can guarantee that. He hits big shots, and you look at his free throw percentage or maybe how he shoots in the game, and you say, man, I don't know if I wanted him up there, but we're all confident in him. You just go up there and shoot him. I mean, I've been in that situation before. Um, you know, I don't have anything to prove to anybody. Andre's wherewithal to, you know, be out of control with two seconds left and draw a foul, and then he makes two free throws. We continue to fight, 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 fight. Uh, different guys made big plays from Andre knocking two free throws down. Dre with huge free throws at the end. The way the game had gone and getting to OT itself was just, that gave us a lot of life for sure. We felt like we were going to be able to take control of the game. For him to get us there with those two free throws, give us a chance, that's all you asked for. And, you know, give the credit. He made a couple of tough free throws, you know, there at the end of there. I haven't been in the league for a really long time. I was coming to the end, so enjoying these last precious moments. Been through them before. You know, I've had some times where I've had success late in games, and I've had times where I failed. You use your failures as a learning experience. And even the first three minutes of overtime, they, we had some breakdowns, and they made some plays, and we still had to find a way to come back in the overtime period. So, we The guys did a great job, I thought, switching and taking away some different things. And we were really, really focused on it, you know, and we did a really good job helping each other. Um, you know, we got him off the three-point line. Oh, well, they didn't get a lot in the paint. We missed him. A ton of layups. Yeah, I've seen some special performances, but I think his is up there. You look at the stretch that he's on right now. Um, you know, I'm sure Kevin wanted to be out there playing. Um, it would have been nice to have him out there. You know, we closed the game without him. I thought it would be different, but I found him. I, I, I shouldn't. I can't touch him. I mean, Steph Curry going to the rim like that, so they called the foul. Uh, defensively, we had a few mistakes towards the end of the game. <laughs> he goes in. He's special. He is. Man, he is special. Uh, did a, a good job of keeping him in front of us. Uh, you know, they made some tough shots. I had to start getting stops on the defensive end, and once we started doing that, still struggling on the offensive end a lot. A lot of missed layups. They did a pretty good job of trying to take us off the three-point line in our sets. We missed some, some easy shots you know, throughout the course of the game. but I think we probably missed 15 layups, point-blank layups. Should have stepped back threes. Got to live with that. He made them 12 for 16 from the three. Oh, it's good! The Curry eruption continues! And all of them, uh, outside of maybe one of them, were tough. So. Uh, I thought we moved the basketball, man, got some, some, some basket in the paint, did a great job of uh, running our stuff. I know we got out-rebounded, but we were battling. Um, but, you know, I thought all the guys, you know, really played their hearts out and, and did a lot of good things. But I, I thought we were pretty organized coming down the end there. You know, we were scoring, um, but obviously we were scoring twos to their threes there coming down the stretch, and that was, a, I think, a big difference, too. I mean, Clay had 32 tonight, and it's, it was like it went unnoticed. Um, he comes up big. You know, obviously with Kevin fouling out um, and, and offensive answers, I thought we tried to get Russell in some space, you know, moving the floor and clear out of side for him to play. And Westbrook pulls back, drives again. Off balance, banker won't go but a foul. That's incredible. Uh, that's why he's the MVP of the league. That's why he's the global figure that he's become. Simply, I'm sorry, Mike, they simply put Steph Curry in the action, trying to get him on Russell Westbrook. You know, he played his heart out and made a lot of good plays. Gritty win. You know, things don't go your way. We really enjoy these games. It's, it's really good for us to experience them. Uh, but we know this team is always going to give us a tough test, and we got to be prepared for these guys. Um, so, you know, it's always a great game. Can you just talk about the one that Clay was able to get uh, toward the end in your uh, 
I'm not sure. I have to look at it and see, um, see what happens. He just he flies under the radar because of his game, his personality, and he's okay with that. You know, it's a little deceiving because of uh, what Steph looks like, choir boy, whatever, and uh, you know Clay is so quiet. Um, Draymond's the only guy who who you can see that passion and that competitiveness. But our, all of our guys, Andre's a fierce competitor. Um, they hate to lose, and um, obviously, you know, we've got a deep team and a lot of skill and. And everybody chips in, but uh, more than anything, they all compete, and that's that's all we can ask. I mean, just the, there's three seconds left, I and mean, you're gonna pull up from 38 feet, like, dude, what are you doing? Good rhythm, dribbling up, and found a spot to take off from, and I had confidence all night, and thankfully that last one went in, we had opportunity to win the game. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Kidding me? What? Every, anybody in the league would celebrate that that play, and yeah, I'm I'm not a great dancer, so um, I probably I just lost my mind a little bit. I actually turned around and saw Andre doing a little shuffle, whatever you want to call it, and I started to do it, uh, but it was quick. That was it. He measured it up. He measured the shot, you know, just kind of the way that he he came up and. We, we watch them take those shots in practice and, and work on shots from, you know, 30, 35 feet. It's, you know, it's, it's crazy. Why are you shooting this from this deep? It's like three seconds left. What was that, 40 feet? It's absurd, man. When he pulled up, he looked like, like, ah, uh, whatever, like, it's going in. When he pulled up, I'm like, all right, I know this one's going in. Uh, he made some tough shots. And, but they, you know, Steph Curry come down and shoot as soon as he calls half court. That's what he do. That's what he do. Well, I got the rebound, so that was the first person I was looking for. And I found him, and um, I didn't go past half court. You know, I knew it was going up. It was four or five seconds on the clock. And um, when you see a guy put the hard work in, put the dedication in, you know, that's what you expect. Andre got it to me um, in the backcourt, and they were kind of shuffling, trying to load up. Um, in transition, I knew he can pick up uh, a body, so. And another ridiculous uh, shooting performance from Steph. Everyone in this locker room, we see him practice from that range every day. And uh, he's got the greatest range I've ever seen. And he may, he look, makes it look so effortless, but uh, that was a ballsy shot. And, you know, um, shoot, seven seconds left. Who would love to have him with the ball. I mean, honestly, I don't know exactly where I am, so it's not like I'm like calibrating in my head. All right, 38 feet, 37, 36. It's just literally you got a sense of I've shot the shot plenty of times. You're coming across half court and you're timing up your dribbles and you want to shoot before the defense closes in. And that was pretty much my only thought. When I got the ball, I knew coach had said if we got to stop, um, you know, and, and a clean rebound, push it. I looked up and I got the ball, and it was about five or six seconds left. The way that they had, you know, were shuffling around in transition, I was able to kind of just go at my own pace and and uh, and rise up, and I got my feet set and you know watch it go in. Certainly there with Russell missing the shot, it's a, it's whatever it is. We, we, we've got to get him earlier. You know, we we can't we got to go up there and get him a, a earlier. Um, you know, and and he he like I think for him like. He, a lot of guys would be rushing it down the floor trying to get up a shot because they're not in range. I think he obviously knows where he's at in the court, and you know the shot he made was an incredible shot. Si chiama storia del basket, ma sempre storia. 
e avviene in movimento davanti ai nostri occhi e guardate la soddisfazione dell'attore della storia mamma mia cosa abbiamo visto mamma mia eh, ils vont jouer le shoot de la victoire pour Curie. Il est loin. Il est dedans. Il est dedans. C'est pas vrai. Mais comment m'aider ce mec-là Il faut l'enfermer. C'est pas possible. Steph Curry, l'impossible devient possible. Devient banal tout simplement. Où mais en dos Sur le méran. Ça croulie. You tied the NBA record for the most threes in a game. Did you know that? I didn't, 12. I didn't know that. That's, thankfully, our last one went in. That's all that counts, the last one. Yeah, that's for sure. Get the win and uh, go home on this long road trip. It's crazy. It's hard to put in words what Steph did, you know. Not only break his own record, but he tied the NBA record. Most amazing thing I've probably ever seen. Address the uh, whole halftime thing first. So, you know, as a human being, I made a mistake. And like I said before, I apologize to my teammates, uh, to everybody who I needed to apologize to. It won't happen again.